Okay. In general, like food, relationship with food, how we were raised in the same household, and how I'm overweight and you're not, and how, I don't know, like, um, you know, it, I have a weird relationship with food and I'm not sure, I kind of have an idea where some of it came from, but then other part of it, I don't get. Maybe I should okay. talk to a therapist. <laughs> Maybe this Go ahead, I'll voice. be a therapist, tell me. I'll tell you exactly what the issue is. No, just kidding. <laughs> Dr. Chris. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. <laughs> you know, okay, so... Okay, a little bit of a background. When we were raised, we were taught, like, we, we sat down as a family for dinner and we were taught you clean your plate you finish your plate were we not yes um so they didn't force us to so if we were full they didn't force us to eat it we we weren't no i don't think so if we got full i i believe that they're like okay well then you're full but you're not getting nothing else you know type thing they Mm. weren't like some families where they're like finish your food finish all your food i don't remember that okay um, or like we would go, like I would go into the pantry and say like our stepdad is in the living room and he would hear the pantry open and he would say, you're eating again. Do you remember that? Not really. I mean, I remember we weren't, I was just, te- I was funny. We were actually having this conversation with the kids here the other day where I remember we were not allowed to go in the refrigerator. We had to ask permission. I don't remember. You don't that. remember being no. kids? We were not allowed to go in the refrigerator. No. We had to ask to get something out because they wanted to watch what we were eating and drinking. Like it was a monitoring thing. Right. I think more than anything. But yeah, they always, we had to ask before we got in the refrigerator. Hmm. Because like, I have an interesting relationship with food. Like if, if like my, my refrigerator is getting low or I don't have a lot, like I get this like, weird anxiety feeling but Mm -hmm. once I fill up the fridge like I'm not hungry it's like if I don't have a lot Mm -hmm. I'm hungry but then when I have it I don't need it it's like a fear of not having Mm, okay or does that come from your childhood or does that come from you with your own little family not having enough at certain times I don't think we ever no no I don't it, it didn't have it ha- I believe it came from childhood I I just don't I don't know maybe because it was so I don't know um, hmm that's interesting yeah it's like a fear of not having enough but then when there's enough I don't need it okay so, so in order to lose weight you have to fill your fridge and your and pantry not eat it. and not touch it probably that's funny okay well, Because it's like kind of empowering to say no, you know, it's empowering to say no, I'm not going to have that or I'm not going to do that. But when you have very little, you like, okay, I'm just going to have, you know, a cup of noodles, you Mm -hmm. know, or, you know, I don't know. It's, I don't know where it comes from, but I know there's an issue there. Hmm. Um, And like growing up I didn't know if we had money or not but we didn't just so you know (laughs) well now I know we didn't yeah so I'm like did I know but not I don't know was there something that and I and and I have problem with um people pleasing Mm -hmm. so when you say that it wasn't enforced like when we were told to finish our food but it wasn't enforced I just someone telling me to do something is enough for me to just do it because I want like being raised the worst thing that could be that could happen in my mind was our parents being disappointed Mm -hmm. and it stems from that I think I you know I don't know probably just cut all this shit out (laughs) I know it's interesting the way that we see things differently right you know um and I was very sensitive so when I was told oh you're eating again that made me feel shame well I'll just say this about our stepdad 
he wasn't always the most considerate with how he's gonna make you feel. You know, he had no problem with joking about how small my boobs were or how big my ears were, you know? Yeah. So, but it doesn't change how you absorb that as a child. You know, just because he wasn't being no, for sure. politically correct or, you know, it just, it had an impact on me that made me feel shame when I was hungry or when I wanted to eat. And yeah, yeah. you know, when you're young, you, you eat when you're bored, but. And when you're old. And yeah. I do it too. But it's like, I was just so sensitive and I think I was such a sponge uh -huh. that. I equated that to bad. So how do you think it affects you today? Well, like, like do you feel shame when you eat or you eat I don't badly? Like, or... I don't like eating in front of other people. Okay. Like what I would do in high school is, you know, I would go to school. I would not eat lunch because I didn't want anyone to see me eat. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I got home, I was so hungry, I would have like two sandwiches. Yeah, you would overeat then and probably. I would huh? overeat, so I was emotional. Right. And then I would eat dinner, you know what I mean? Uh, probably three Within, hours later. Right. And I, it was like, I guess, eating like I didn't want people to look at and I wasn't overweight like when I was 15 like right. I look back at pictures and I'm like if I only knew right you're you like know? oh I thought I was overweight right but you, uh, yeah but I, I wasn't about, like and, your basketball picture you know yeah look overweight yeah but I was doing that kind of stuff at that but I time. think to you compared yourself to me probably I think probably you've always been smaller yeah but I, I have a different build you have more right. of mom's side and I think I have more of like like grandma, yeah, you know, grandma Nana, yeah. I have, and she would always say that, you're like me, you're always going to be small like me, Yeah. but that also did something to me, really? because then when I gain weight, I think of that, like, mm. no, I have to stay small like grandma, you know, so I've had a body, I really believe I have body dysmorphia, me too, well, uh, because I have always cared so much about losing weight, being thin, you know, okay. being hard on myself if I gained weight. You know, and what I did to my kids behind that, behind them hearing me, and now my kids are the same way. Mm. You know, I've always heard them like, oh, I'm, I'm fat, oh, I gained weight, oh, you know, and now, and, and I remember their dad used to tell me, your daughters are hearing you, and I'd be like, whatever, you know, but it's true. How you talk to yourself is how they're gonna talk exactly. to themselves. Exactly. And I wasn't like, like, um, yeah, I wasn't verbal about it. I was all internal, you know? Yeah. But there was shame. There still is shame. I don't like eating in front of other people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not like I'll starve myself, but it's uncomfortable. Unless everyone else is eating. Right. You know, I'm not going to just go and grab something if no one else is eating. Even at home, really? At home? Like amongst um, your family? Yeah. Well, yeah. Hmm. And then it's pretty, it's pretty bad sometimes because it's like, okay, when my husband leaves, I can go have this. Mm. Because I don't want to be judged by eating something, but I tell myself, everyone sees it on you. It's not like you can eat and <laughs> right. You can't eat it. These are invisible calories. <laughs> You can't eat in secret and then no one sees it on you. It's like, right. and I hate that. I hate, like, I, I need to go to the doctor. I'm getting older and I do need to get my hormones checked, but I'm not blaming any of that on my hormones. Mm -hmm. I know I have bad habits and I have emotional, you know, I have a bad relationship with food, but yeah. it's like, you know, say you're drug addicted. Well, at least you can go through detox and not yeah. do drugs. Just but stay food, away from them. Yeah. You have to consume it. Right. And, For sure. You know, and unfortunately, like, the choices I make are not good. Like, I mean, uh, recently, okay, so I've been doing, like, a meal replacement shake in the morning at work, and then I'll bring a meal replacement bar to work, mm -hmm. and that's all I have. But then when I get home at three, it's like I'm hungry. Yeah. And you what know, do you eat? I'll I'll cut up an apple, but then and I'll eat halfway through. But I'm like, I want chips. Yeah. 
So well, that's the problem is that when you get so hungry, you, you may crave all the bad things too. You crave you're hungry, right? Mm -hmm. And so then you want something quick, right? And so we tend to grab something quick, and but usually it's usually it's bad, unhealthy. right? Yeah. And then the problem is, is we keep eating until we're stuffed because it takes time to get full. So right. instead of eating like, and then waiting 10 minutes, right. you know, you we don't do that. Eating. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, it did kind of change for me when I was doing keto because you really learn, um, you learn not to get that carb full feeling. Yeah. So, so it was really hard because that carb full feeling comforts me. Mm -hmm. It For makes sure. me feel taken care of. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel safe. It makes me feel like I have what I need. Yeah. And when you're doing keto, you're not doing carbs. So you may be full, but you never get that feeling. Mm -hmm. And so it was like detox for me going through that, you know, yeah. but I did it and I got through that, that hard part, you know, where it became second nature. Right. And you really start to change the way you see food. You start seeing it as fuel and not as an emotional thing, because if you're sticking to your keto diet, you know that if you eat whatever it is you're allowed to have, it's not gonna give you what you want. Like, right. it's not gonna give you that satisfying carb feeling. Yeah. But you kind of get used to it after a while that it's like, what it is is you can't turn to food anymore to make you happy. Mm -hmm. And that's what I learned. But I, you know, I did it for like a year or I needed to do more, I needed to change it up or, you know, and then I fall off of it and then I go back to the same bad habits. Yeah, we all do that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we almost but not all everybody, do that. But not everybody has a problem with food. I think more people have it than you think have it. You just think that the thin it's, people have it in a different way to where they're like super controlling about it? Everybody could be different. I still, I have a, I have a bad time with food. I, I use food to comfort myself when I'm unhappy, you know, to get that full feeling. It's like you're either, full, when you're full, full, you're happy, but if you're just cool, not hungry, not full, but in the middle, you're always like trying to eat to get full. Right. You know, like I, I can make fish and rice and vegetables and you eat and you're like, oh, that was good. I'm satisfied. I'm full. You know, I'm not full, but it's. You never have that, that feeling of as if you sat and ate pizza. Right. It's a different full. Right. And you have to get used to that, you right. know? And same thing with like, you know, if you just have fruits and vegetables in your house, I mean, it's... it's that's you know, all you're going to eat. It's, yeah. But it's not fun. Right. You know, at least that's what we tell ourselves. And it really takes a lot of training and, and to get out of that. And the bad thing is, is when you fall back. It's you fall so hard. hard to get yeah. back on, you know, like mm -hmm. I know all the things I need to do, but am I doing them? No. Right. You know, now am I buying bullshit to eat here? Like, no, you know, I don't buy the chocolate donuts anymore. I still have soda in the, you know, garage and I do have some of that sometimes, but mm -hmm. I'm really, what I'm working on is trying to not be so hard on myself. Hmm. I don't need to weigh a certain number like I did. 10, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. you know? Now, do I need to weigh 200? Absolutely not. Right. So I need to find a middle ground. I need to be okay with that. I need to still exercise, you know, not like a maniac like I usually do, but a couple times a week to take care of myself, to get some energy, yeah. try to eat better. You know, I know all the things. It's what we all need to do. You know, we don't all need to be in the gym every day. Right. You know, a lot of us, for a lot of us, it's just not realistic. Yeah, you know, and and I've always put so much on myself, and that's what I'm trying to change. Yeah, you know, I need to be okay with who I am. I don't. It's not about your body. I didn't appreciate myself when I weighed 120. Right. I still thought I had to work out and do all these things and not eat so bad and get firm. I didn't feel good at 120. Mm. Although I was telling myself, you know, I no, I didn't feel good about myself. I feel better about myself today with this weight than I did in my 20s at you know, a less at, you look at 120 healthy, you know yeah I mean, my pooch doesn't tell me I'm healthy <laughs> but I'm also like you know I just don't need to put pressure on myself yeah. I'm just about being happy
Right. And so, you know, when I just, when it cools down, I'm going to start hiking again, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do things that I want to do, and I don't want to walk when it's hot. I hate the heat. Yeah. So I'm not going to. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I just, I think my thing is like, I need to learn how to be uncomfortable and sit in that uncomfortable state and know I'm not going to die. Mm -hmm. If my stomach is growling and I don't like, like if I didn't pack food in my purse before I went to work, yeah, I would have like this anxiety of needing, yeah. needing it and not having it. No. And I get that. I'm the you same know? way. Nobody likes to feel hunger. Right. You know, but, but then again, it's like, when your stomach is growling and say you don't eat, it does pass, you know, it, does. It, it passes and it gives you a break and then it comes back again. But yeah. see my, like, I don't like to be uncomfortable and I need to get out of that. Like what, what growth comes from not being uncomfortable? Right. Very true. You know, and, and I need to sit with it and learn you're not going to die if you don't eat, you know, Yeah. you know, for four hours. Right. Like drinking. Yeah. Drink water, iced tea, but I have to sit with being uncomfortable and, and be okay with that. And I, I, I just have a hard time. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, do you think like, I mean, you know what to do, but do you think like coming up with a plan and like saying, okay, let's do this. Like we've talked about trying to do it together. Yeah. You know, do you think that helps or? I don't, I'm, I'm just at such a hard place where like, you know, my weight makes me unhappy, but mm -hmm. I am I willing to do anything about it I, it's like yeah. I'm so unhappy that I want that burger to feel happiness right no I that's but I then feel, here then I you am pick yourself here I am right I'm not helping myself right. so there has to something has to give and it has to be me being ready yeah to make those changes and be uncomfortable and maybe that should be my my goal for next week is is to be uncomfortable every day yeah in some capacity be outside and be hot or be hungry for a little while or I mm -hmm. don't know what or or be social and even though you don't want to be yeah because last weekend my husband wanted to go out I think it was or no the weekend before we went out and saw his brothers and um, we just met him for a bit and like when I was getting dressed I was literally crying why because I'm like I don't have any clothes I look fat and everything mm -hmm. like I had already done my hair and my nails and I was ready and then I go to get dressed and I'm crying but I'm still pushing myself to go out because I wanted to say no I'm not going yeah I really did but you know what I found something and I you know dried my tears and he didn't even know I was crying yeah um but I forced myself to go out because if I don't like why not wear pajamas all the time you know what I mean right. like I I still need to see because it, I feel like if I don't go out in public like who's gonna hold me accountable mm -hmm. obviously I'm not holding myself accountable yeah, and that's not going to be good. You know? Yeah. So, is it what other people think that's going to hold me accountable? Right. At least it's something, but that's not a healthy thing either. It, yeah. I should want more for myself. I should want more to be around and be healthy and be happy. And it just takes me being uncomfortable and doing just doing the work and not thinking about it. Like I taught my kids growing up when they will wake up and they go, mom, I don't want to go to school. You know what? You don't wake up and think about what you want to do. You just get up. 
Because if I laid in bed and thought about not going to work, not yeah. wanting to go to work, guess what? I'm going to have a shitty day. Right. Because I've already set myself up for a shitty day. For sure. So you just get up and do the work and get up and, and go through the motions. Yeah. Get in the shower. Then mm -hmm. eat breakfast. Then mm -hmm. leave. You know, it's like steps. And I think I have to break it down into the most simplistic steps possible because I'm a rule follower. Yeah. But there's some disconnect where I can't get myself to to follow rules that aren't set by someone else. I don't follow yeah. my own rules. No, for sure. I'll follow someone else's because I care what they think about me, mm -hmm. but I guess I don't care what I think about myself. I mean, I like who I am as a person inside, but you know, I'm not happy with my physical and, and how that makes me feel. Like, I know I don't sleep as good as I should. And I try, you know, I get tired and, and I mentally, I'm not as fat as I am. Like mentally, I don't feel as fat as I am, but physically I'm right. reminded of it all the time. And you get frustrated. And I get, it's yeah. just a mess. Yeah. It's kind of like the age thing. Like you think in your mind, you're not yes. old and then your body's like, yeah, you are. Right. Right. So I think, you know, setting simple steps up and I, Mel Robbins, I follow her on Instagram. She's a motivational speaker mm -hmm. and she says, just move, just move. Like if you yeah. ever feel stuck and you feel like in a panic mode, she said, go five, four, three, two, one, and move your body. Yeah. Because it takes it out of that mental panic or anxiety. What, anxiety. Like just getting up out of it. If you're laying in bed having a panic attack, get up. Yeah. You know, walk um, around with a panic attack. Well, it'll go away. Well, exactly. Right. And, and how she explained it to a lady is. Okay, say you almost get in a car accident and your heart is racing and you feel like, oh my gosh, I could have died. Your brain has an explanation of why your body is responding that way. Mm -hmm. You almost got into a car accident. Yeah. A panic attack is when your body responds that way mm -hmm. with no reason that your brain can't make sense of. Mm. So if you're having those symptoms and your brain doesn't make sense of it, get up move your body because mm -hmm. then it makes your brain move past what it's stuck how it's stuck i'm not explaining it right but it you know so i follow her and she says to get up and move and you know she has a she has a short um series on audible that's only like 20 30 minutes long uh -huh. like her first episode is about happiness uh -huh. and three things to do to find happiness okay and um i really like i think every week i want to listen to her and then do the steps every day to try to meet that challenge of whatever topic she's talking about okay because she'll talk about happiness one day her next episode might be about relationships or family or, okay. you know, fitness or, you yeah. know, so I need to start setting some rules in place for me and then hold myself accountable. Right. Cause she, cause she said, you have to prove that you're there for yourself and you show up for yourself. Yeah. And a way of doing that is making a promise to yourself and then being there for yourself by meeting it. Yeah. It could be waking up and making your bed uh -huh. if that's what you told yourself that you promised to do right and she also said if you want to make changes in your life piggyback the change with something you do already so if you make your bed every day mm -hmm. the next step would be to meditate for five minutes okay you have to piggyback the new thing on top of the other things so you brush okay. your teeth you know then after you brush your teeth, you write in your journal for five minutes okay. or 10 minutes. Yeah. You're piggybacking the new thing onto something you do already. Okay. So that it's, yeah. you're not just it making becomes second nature, just right. like the first thing you did. Right. Okay. So yeah, I'm kind of just talking all this out loud, but I think, you know, I need to be there for myself and 
you know, yeah, show up sure. and, and make smart choices for myself. Definitely. And not short-term uh, gratification. But at the end of the day, it's about feeling good. So I don't want you to think I have to be miserable. That you have to be, look a certain way or weigh a certain amount. You know, like I think the biggest thing is just try to be healthy. Yeah. Because we are getting older and it's just going to get harder. And yeah. it's, we're just going to get more unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And so if we can just try to be our healthiest now and establish pat good patterns now, yes, we'll just get better. Mm hmm. So I think that's, it's hard because like it, we can sit here and talk all day and we're right. both going to have opposite ends of the spectrum, mm -hmm. you know, like you could talk about any one subject of us growing up and we're going to see it completely different. Yeah. You know, where you always see me as thin, I don't go, yeah, I'm thin and you're fat and that's great. You know what I mean? No. Right. Cause I have issues behind my weight. Right. You know? Right. So it's, it's, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. where you can take one topic and you think I'm one way or, you know, right. but I have my or own certain issues. things happened a certain way and we see it differently. Oh, yeah. definitely that. But you may think I have it good in one way, but actually I have my own issues behind that good thing. Oh yeah. You know? Well, so. I think, I think, you know, people that are overweight, maybe I'm stepping out of bounds, but like I have the impression that everyone who's thin is happy. True. Yes. A lot but of I think that. But I know they have, they have no. other issues, you know? They have shit going on. I get yeah. it. But for someone who it's almost like it's an obsession that all you can think about is what you're not supposed to do. Right. So then you end up doing it. Yeah. It's like let's focus on what I should be doing and not what I shouldn't be doing. Right. Well, you would think with me that I would get it because, like, I don't eat meat, right? Mm -hmm. I haven't had chicken, beef, pork, any of that in three and a half years. Wow. 17, yeah, three, four and a half years. So, I know how to do it. Like, and I don't get tempted. Like, I don't ever go, well, maybe I'll just have a little bit. Right. You know what I mean? I have not had it. You just, because I purposefully you just already know. am like, I'm not doing this, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, does it smell good sometimes? Yeah, but then I could think back to that little animal that got murdered. And I'm like, I will not do this. Right. And I'm very strong in that. Right. You know? Um, and I was good at that when I was doing keto. Because I wouldn't look at things as a possibility anymore. Right. I would know bread is a no-no. Right. I'm not even going to think about bread anymore. Right. I'm not going to think about rice. I'm not going to think about sugar. Right. It's like out of sight. Like, it, that's but, why I said about focusing. Why yeah. focus on what you're not supposed to do instead of focusing on what you should do? But even doing. when you would come here, mm -hmm. you'd be like, no, I'm not, I don't eat that. I'm yeah. not. Like, like donuts. Fine. Like donuts. Probably I'm that's like, when no. I had the chocolate donuts <laughs> and you're like, no, I'm good. And I'm like stuffing them in my face. <laughs> no, but you were like, what? <laughs> like, who are you? And who doesn't want a chocolate donut? <laughs> but like. I was really, really strong mentally. Like you were. Like that's not an option for me, so, so I'm not going to be tempted by it. Well, what made I you think fall I off? wasn't seeing the results anymore that I wanted. Okay. And I think I just needed to tweak it. Okay. You know. Instead, you said, "Well, fuck it." <laughs> well, it starts slow. It starts like, "Oh, well, I'll have half a piece of bread," or you yeah. know, it starts little, but then it just it it just snowballs. So, okay. Yeah. And then I'm thinking, like, is that because I haven't seen a doctor in so long, I'm like, is that even the right avenue for me? Like, right. like tell me what to do. Do I need to eat um, everything in moderation? Right. Or should I do keto and low carb? You know, I know sugar is the enemy and feeds but cancer. But you also did intermittent fasting during yeah. that time. I added it in later when I wasn't getting the results. And did you get any results with Not that? Not what I was expecting, but I don't think I did it right. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I could have, because, yeah. Well, I told you about the guy, uh, Stephen Gundry? Yes. Um, Dr. Gundry. Dr. Gundry in mm -hmm. Palm Springs. Um, 
he does the, the fasting thing, but his is also like low carb. It's kind of like the keto mm -hmm. and intermittent fasting. Okay. Um, but I was thinking of trying that because it makes a lot of sense. Cause I just wonder about like leaky, having leaky gut. A lot of people have it and don't know they have it uh -huh. and it runs down your energy and I have no energy. Like I, I just, I haven't had energy forever, but it's really has been bad the last year. So I wanted to try that. Mm -hmm. Um, and do the intermittent fasting as well. Yeah. And he said that when you do that, more of your energy from your body is going to repairing cells than it is going to digestion. Right. He said a lot of problem is going, all the energy goes to your digestion when you're constantly eating, and then you're eating the wrong thing and it's to being toxic to your body. Right. So, I don't know. I, I definitely think that that is a good route. Um, I think it would be, e here I go with easier. If I if I were to do keto again, because I remember with keto, you don't get hungry. Like you really, because you're eating basically f like healthy fats. Yeah. You stay full longer. Because you're eating meat all the time. Well, you're right? eating meat and like avocado and uh -huh. and um, salad. You know, you could do salads and stuff, but it's some not, vegetables, right? Right some vegetables yeah um but i definitely think that intermittent fasting is easier if you do it after you've been doing like keto for a while because i think it kind of trains you to not be hungry mm. and i need to look at food differently before i just you know i see it like starving myself yeah and some people do it like i have a six hour window to eat or i have an eight yes. hour window to mm -hmm. eat but then Dr. Gendry, didn't you say he'll go? He'll, he'll go, he eats one time a day. Yeah. But he trained it. himself that way. Right. He didn't do that overnight. Right. So he said, take a 12 hour window, then knock it down to 10 hours and then go back to, you know, eight, then six and four, you know, or how much ever you're comfortable with. Right. He's like, there isn't a magic number. He's mm -hmm. like, it's whatever it works for you and however you feel your best. And so, he's doing this for life. Yeah. He's yeah, been doing this. This is and life. That's like, you know? What, it's not like a diet. It's no, it's like not a diet. Life. And we can't look at it like a diet. Right. But it's hard. It's hard when there's a bunch of junk out there that's good, you know? Right. Yeah. It's easy. It's too easy when we're at work and people bring donuts and, you know, that type yeah. of thing. So. And I just, I when I was doing it, I got really empowered by saying no. Yes. It's very empowering to say no. I like the control yeah. of saying no. It's like... It's like, no, I don't need you. You know right. what I mean? Yes. I, I'm good. So I just, I need to get back there. I, I have to, I have to think about what I'm going to do, but yeah, I think it's not just about my body, but my mind, you know, I should be meditating. I should be journaling, mm -hmm. you know, those are all healthy ways to process, you know, information yep. and emotions, you know? Like when I write stuff down, I process it way different. Yeah. And even talking out loud, like I'll discover stuff when I'm telling someone something that I hadn't really thought of before. Right. Until I hear other things come out of my mouth and then I'm like, actually I'm processing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, it's, you know, it's an ongoing thing. I think a lot of us crafters can relate because we sit here and we diamond paint or craft and we might eat or drink soda, you know, and right. we're not the most active maybe that we could be. Um, yeah. Cause you can't diamond paint while walking. Not that not, I, know of. I haven't figured out not how yet. That I know of. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine having a treadmill set up and then having like a debt. Cause I they, can't read and walk on the treadmill. No, I can't. I cannot. They have those um, desk treadmills. I know. You know? What a joke. <laughs> Imagine? No. I'd be like, <laughs> I, try to pull on drill. Forget doing squares. I know, for sure. <laughs> They'd be all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I think this talk was long enough and, and, and depressing enough. And serious enough. Yeah. And maybe we did need to do a longer whip and chat. Maybe people will respond to longer whip and chat. So well, maybe people will see themselves in this, you know, in yeah. this topic. Cause yeah. it's hard. It's hard for women as we get older and our bodies change and, you know, we don't have the energy we used to. And, and then we get into a 
sedentary lifestyle or the crafts that yeah you know and we're just judged so much harsher than men oh for like sure. men age gracefully they get gray hair they get wrinkles and it's attractive and they get beer bellies and it's fine right we don't leave a man over a beer belly right? but we will get left in a second right man anyway i guess it's time for a joke <laughs> <laughs> Come on, ah, fat dads. Okay. Let's... Why couldn't a bicycle stand up by itself? I know it. Because it was too tired. <laughs> Damn it! I'm cutting that. <laughs> I'm giving you a different one. Cut. Okay, because I just I said it wrong anyway. Alright, ready? How many apples grew on a tree? Two. <laughs> I don't know. All of them. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Alright. Here's mine. Why is cold water so insecure? Because it used to be hot. <laughs> I don't know. Because it's never called hot. Oh, oh there you go. You're close. Oh, you're close. How about this? Rest in peace, boiled water. You will be missed. Get it? Missed? <laughs> oh my god, that was terrible. <laughs> I looked at her Wait, like, what the hell? You know, I would, and I was thinking, and I wrote this down. What makes a good dad joke? It makes you roll your eyes, right? It For makes sure. you go, oh my gosh. Like, yes, exactly. Like how many apples grew on the tree? Like how, I mean, no, it's simple, yeah. right? Well, Jason is my tester because if he rolls his eyes and goes, oh, then I know it's good because he hates dad jokes. He was the inspiration behind this dad joke thing, you know? Yeah. Because I would love them and I'd always like say them and he hated it. And he it. hates them and I'm like, how do you hate dad jokes? How do you, what's wrong with you? You're not like, fun. Dad jokes are awesome. You're not fun. Right? All right. That's it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you all didn't cry yourself to sleep behind these topics and I know and you'll still listen to us on another day and they'll be like I didn't think I had issues until I heard them talk. I know right? <laughs> no, they're gonna say I thought I had issues until oh, I heard them okay. talk. Well, at least they don't feel alone then, you no. know? Yep, we're screwed up too y'all. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry, we got more. And to, yes, and to uh, hear more on how screwed up we are, <laughs> check out another video. Right. Subscribe, <laughs> like, share. Yeah. All the YouTube things. That's right. See y'all later. Bye, crafters.